Here we are, folks. Another fantastic guest, a fascinating guest, successful woman, entrepreneur. Gosh, where do you start? You know, she is a vision strategist with an amazing story, and she's found a two pronged solution in this hour to help her clients. It's none other than Terry Werner. How are you doing, Terry? I'm doing great. How are you? Great to okay. be here. How's that for an introduction, huh? No pressure. <laughs> yeah, really. I should pay for that one. Gosh. Hey. There you go. Well, you know, Terry, um, gosh, you are no stranger to speaking to crowds and and you've shared the stage with Zig Ziglar. And yeah, you must have been three years old when you did that. But all that to say <laughs> is, you know, uh, I'm really enjoying getting to know you. I know that our audience will enjoy getting to know you as well, Terry. Uh, you're a fascinating woman. You have a lot to say, a lot of fantastic experience and the pr two prong solution of helping your clients uh, is truly the real deal. But before we get into that, tell the folks about your background and, and your passion and helping people achieve their vision. Wow. That's a, that's a tough one. I should have asked for how many hours we were going to be doing this, right? Oh, we'll, we'll do this several <laughs> um, times. <laughs> actually, I have felt a calling, um, from early in my life to make a difference in lives. I was raised in a pastor's home. And so that's just kind of embedded in you. I went into business years ago, years and decades and decades ago. We won't go into how many decades. And actually, uh, Zig Ziglar is a big part of my story. Uh, he had the tape cassettes back at the time. That dates me, right? And he would give you know motivational and personal development. And I just fell in love with the thought of being able to open your heart and change your mind. And that's what he did for me. And he made one statement that that statement was something I embraced. I It touched my heart, opened my heart, it changed my mind. And I created strategies from that one statement that changed my life. And literally the, the trajectory of my life totally changed when I embraced the strategies and the vision. And that's really has been my life, vision and strategies. Uh, without a vision, people perish, but most people don't know how to create vision, how to connect and how, how to commit to vision and the strategies that undergird the vision. We see people with all these kind of dreams and visions they're not really connected with, yet also they don't have the strategies as well. Mm -hmm. So they're in a conundrum, really, that nothing will ever happen positive. So they blame people, place and things. All the opportunities, they're all wrong. All the situations, they're all wrong. When the reality is the vision is first and the strategy. So it has been a big part of my life, all my life. What well, has? And uh, you've had success earlier on. I mean, you even took a company public, you know, mm -hmm. uh, as mm -hmm. you were continuing to learn, you've enjoyed a lot of success. And tell us about mm -hmm. that. Well, my father was a minister. And I was an interior designer. That was the statement Zig Ziglar made. He said, I've seen boys born and girls born. I've never seen a doctor born, attorney wow. born. I've never seen an interior designer born. Well, all my life, I had loved anything with design and furniture and fabric and all that. I just loved it. But I didn't think I was born with that talent. But actually, come to find out, I actually had that innate talent. So dad and I combined our passions for ministry and put it into one company where we provided interior design solutions for churches across the United States. And that company became a publicly held entity when I was 37 and uh, didn't know what I didn't know and didn't know what I did know, you know? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so I figured out both of those and uh, it has been the foundation from which I, it has been a springboard of my life, the same skills and really coaching that I used to do my part in creating success with that company are the very same skills I now also have embedded into the trainings I do now. But it was a good experience. It was certainly very viable and vital. And it was one of those experiences where you give up a lot of control. You give up a lot of, you don't know how much you give up in that situation. And, um, when you're called to something, that's not easy. And so I then went into creating training and coaching for entrepreneurs mm. uh, to create entrepreneurial excellence, but to understand the shortcuts and understand the patterns in success. There so, you go. So very important. <laughs> very well done. You know, Terry, you know, uh, 
uh, a lot of people talk about success, but they they haven't exactly experienced it themselves, or they talk about success, but their success is telling you about success, uh, which is wonderful. <laughs> but how many people have actually taken a company or developed a vision? You know, uh, 24 years ago, I got to train about 300 pastors in outreach marketing, uh, out of outreach marketing in Vista, California. We talked about uh, a mission statement and a vision statement, you know, mission in the ministry circles, at least at that time, what, how they trained us to train them was that a, a mission statement is what you do, you know, but a vision statement is what it's going to look like when you're done, you know, kind of a rallying cry, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, we, we communicate the truth and we, you know, bring them in and build them up and send them out. You've heard that a lot, right. In ministry. Right. But mm -hmm. by 2025, we want, you know, 1 million Christians to, <laughs> that's a vision statement. You can kind of measure that. And it, it was mm -hmm. shocking how many people, uh, you know, in the ministry circles and I'll call and later on in the business circles, they really didn't know the difference between a mission and a vision. And, but you know, you have, and you've communicated that, uh, you've enjoyed success. You continue to succeed, you know, because of your heart for ministry. Uh, even in the business, business world, you still have mm -hmm. a company uh, and, and you do it well. You inspire people. You know, it's kind of funny. There's a tremendous prophetic minister named Betty Swan. She uh, uh, She's a former supermodel. And you really remind me of her. You you two could be sisters, you know. But there's a saying, Terry, and, and, and that Thank is, <laughs> well, it's true. It's true. Uh, it's easy when it's true. Now, you, you know, you don't have to have a good memory if you tell the truth. Just tell the truth. You know, you don't have to remember yeah, anything. Yeah. And, and it, it is unique. the truth, you know. In our market, that's unique. <laughs> <laughs> <To tell the truth. laughs> well, you know, a lot of people that are watching right now, they say, man, that's a beautiful lady. And they would be surprised to hear about your journey. But, you know, as we go into that, a lot of people will say, you know, you can have this and this and this. Uh, but if you don't have your health, you don't have anything, right? Boy, you mm, know that's, that's true. true because you know what it's like uh, to I to do. conduct business or attempt to conduct business and fulfill your vision and helping people achieve their strategic visions, but to try to do that when your health uh, was suffering. And uh, you know what it's like to have triumph mm -hmm. from potential tragedy. You want to tell us about mm -hmm. that? Oh, yes, I'd love to, um, you know, in coaching, because I coach entrepreneurs in ministry and in the marketplace, yeah. I'm really called to the marketplace ministry. And um, as I was coaching, I noticed that my energy just wasn't there. My desire wasn't there. I thought, gosh, I'm very connected to the vision around supporting others' lives, and I'm just not there. Yeah. Uh, I would make decisions to do all kinds of things, whether it was weight loss, whether it was focus, whether it was build the business, all these things, the decision and just fall short. And I just wondered what in the world is going on. I noticed that walking across the room sometimes was difficult at the time and uh, just was having challenges that go with, you know, challenges. I was older, getting older. And I thought, gosh, this can't be what this feels like. This cannot be because I thought I was invincible anyway to turning older, you know, uh, and then I just noticed that in my coaching clients, um, they were having the same challenges. They were making great decisions, creating vision, creating commitment, next steps, patterns, yet they would go, go, go and build their business. But yet all of a sudden they would go back to their old pattern. And I thought, you know, I knew that the coaching was working because they were increasing their income by 400%, but then go back to the old pattern, just start feeling horrible. Mm. And then I was hospitalized. Wow. Uh, and that was when no one could come see you. So I was terribly fearful of being in a hospital alone. So I didn't go for a long time until it was, it became mandatory. Um, my husband literally put me in the car. I could barely hold my head up. We went to the hospital and they kept me. Wow. They kept me in the hospital for 11 days. And it's actually a story of great trauma, but also great victory. Um, I was in the hospital. They took me to a room that I'm um, now I'm an interior designer that's recovered now business coach, right? So color is important to me. They right. take me to a room plop me in this bed immediately and they've got all kinds of specialists coming around me and I didn't even know how ill I was but they take me to a room that's painted the same color of teal as my bedroom 
literally it was like going to a spa in the back of the area. I wasn't around all the noise and the nurses and all right. the hubbub and chaos. I was locked in a room basically in isolation. Uh, but it was like from that moment that I got there, Brent, it was like an amazing feeling of peace flooded mm. me. Wow. Just the peace of God just flooded me. Mm. And again, I mean, I'm the person when they used to give blood tests for marriage tests, I literally passed out one time. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm like, you know, the squeeziest person and I'm there in peace and all these seven specialists come in, put me on oxygen, do all those things. And I never felt in 11 days, I never felt that lack of peace, but one time. Hmm. And I listened to worship music during the night. And it was so interesting because um, I call them my angels. They were, I would have doctors, nurses, people that had been in ministry became my nurses. And they were, well, they said I was going to be here for three days with you, which I'm never with a person three days. They only had pull them in one day and send them out. They were always just, they were just working extra time to help. And it was interesting because while that was happening, um, they would come in and say, God woke me up in the middle of the night and he let me know that you were called. He said, the woman I'm going to work with is called of me to do great things. And I want you to tell her she's called and she's going to live and not die. Wow. And they would work with me and leave the next day. Someone else would come in. The one man was from Africa. He had a ministry and he was a nurse. He came in and he said, I want to tell you that you're going to live and not die, but there's things you're going to learn in this room that you need to take with you. God told me you're called of him. So all these things happened. I finally got out of jail, the hospital jail, which was incredibly traumatizing. Wow. Uh, I, cannot, I cannot even put into words the level of trauma that was to be alone, to not know you know, they kept, they would come in one day and say, good news. We're not going to put you on a ventilator. And I'm like, well, no, you're not. You're not putting, no, right. I didn't know how big I was. So it was very traumatizing. I got home. My husband didn't even recognize me when he picked me up at the hospital, the steroids and all the product they pumped me full of while I was there trying to save my life had just created a very bloated version of myself. Um, I didn't recognize myself looking in the mirror it was very tough. And I think one thing, one message I would love to give to people is if you've had that experience for whatever reason, you've been mm -hmm. you know, isolated or in the hospital or whatever, a lot of people have much rougher life in that situation or in other situations than I have. Mm -hmm. I want you to just give yourself the understanding, give yourself some time, give yourself some understanding that this has been a very hard thing for you. Uh, but God was with you. There's a there's a song by uh, Larry, uh, Terry McCammon mm. that it was uh, one of my favorite songs of his, and he's always been a favorite of mine. Uh, but one of the songs I found on my phone was "He Restoreth My Soul." Wow! And I listened to that song for hours and hours and hours, and would just feel the presence of God. And it was just such an amazing experience to feel His peace and his presence. And even in that situation, he was there. And one morning, I want to say one more thing about it. One morning, about three o'clock in the morning, my blood pressure would keep dipping and dipping and dipping and dipping. And they didn't know why. And it was frightening low. And I reached out to God in the middle of the night. And I just said, God, we need an answer. And it was very defining for me, very defining for me. And God spoke back to me and he said, no, you're wrong. We don't need an answer. I am the answer. And you think that a preacher's kid would know this, and you think that people that we've gone through ministry and life, we would know this. The reality was I needed that wake-up call because I had been doing a lot in my own power all my life. I was like, oh, I'll just do it myself. I'll send you an email, God. All these people need you so bad. I know they need you, but you know, I need you, but I'm just going to let you know how things are going here. You know, I was like, um, I was really operating in my own power. And that moment was so defining for me that, you know, I used to sing, travel and sing with church groups and we'd sing Jesus is the answer for the world today. Oh man, I remember that song. 
Remember that? Remember that? Jesus is the answer. Yeah, I love that. Daisy McGrew used Dallas to sing Hall. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That, that, that's a Dallas yeah. Hall. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. I think it is. I think it is. And um, I will tell you, it was a defining moment for me, but it wow. was a long road back. And so my health, I just started nurturing my health, but I lost all motivation. I lost that sense mm. of the feeling. What wow. for two years I was in a wheelchair part of the time, not all the time, just a few weeks. And I've got to a place here a few years later, here we are, that the calling I was told about all my life that I felt like I had, and then God reaffirmed it, I, I began to question, like, what is my calling? Mm -hmm. I'm 69 years old now this moment <laughs> then I was around 67 68 and I was like what is the calling what is that calling I had a hard time even feeling that I was really in my body feeling connected with myself feeling connected with God feeling all those things that we take for granted we say not to live on emotions but you know we do at least I was, I guess. Right, right. So I realized how futile that was and became very tough. Um, and then I looked, so I looked, I started getting back into the place where God started really speaking to me through his word. Mm -hmm. And even when I didn't feel like reading the word, I didn't feel connected to the word. I didn't, it was a, you know, a brain thing. You know, I didn't right. feel connected for a while to a lot. I started just reading the word. And, you know, just the other night in reading the word, I believe it, it is uh, Psalms 126, the first, I, I believe that is it, the first verse says something like, and the Lord, when the Lord returned, turned, when the Lord turned Zion from captivity, mm. it was as though we were those who dream. We were as those who dream, I think is the King James Version. Yep. We and were the like Lord them that dream. Wow. Yeah, we were like them that dream. I'm, I'm looking Lord, at it right now. So yeah, I, I love really, looking at the scripture. Great, great. So the Lord just spoke to me and said, you forgot to keep dreaming. Mm -hmm. I didn't die in this dream. I didn't take you. You know, I took you through wow. it to get to keep dreaming. You know, the Lord told me a long time ago, what you call dream, I call destiny. And I believe there's intersections with destiny, wow. with people, divine yes, intervention. Is intersections and you know when you go through an intersection with death you know an, an, an intersection you know, like when you have a little fender bender yeah you're like oh if i hadn't stopped at mcdonald's if i hadn't dropped the kid off at daycare if i hadn't got the cleaning i wouldn't have been at that place at that time well that's the intersection with destiny a lot of times we look at slow ups in our life and delays hmm. and difficulties and we think i'm not where now at my age i'm not where i need to be i'm not where i thought i would be I'm not there financially. I'm not there in my health. I'm not there in my life's calling. I haven't right. done what I thought I would do. No matter what our age or stage of life, we can feel that way. And a lot of times, God, I believe God has held us up to make sure we're at the right place at the right time for that impact to impart into our life the answer for the rest of our life. That changes that one moment changes our trajectory. Wow. Our path to where we're going. And so blessing those delays, blessing those areas of trauma, blessing those times that were just not what we thought they would be. We've mm -hmm. all had those. Yeah. And knowing what is the lesson, what is the pattern here I want to pay attention to, and where is the miracle? And quite frankly, a lot of the time. God has put us in place to be the miracle for others, to touch others. And so I um, I started looking for something that would help my health and mm -hmm. would make a difference. And I had a lot of other, you know, challenges in my life health-wise that were before any kind of a traumatic situation and um, had a real, a lot of business upsets and different things that caused, you know, I would, my answer was eating carbs, you know, and my body's answer was not to deal with it well. And so those two lack of answers definitely created a traumatic event in my body. Um, just was not feeling good. 
And I realize that a lot of people don't fulfill their calling. They don't, they're not able to, they don't have the capacity to really thrive in their calling. Wow. And that's wow. why if we have a calling on our life, it's for us to flow, to thrive, to be dynamic in that. We don't limp into it. You know, come on, right. I'll drag you your calling. God's not dragging us through our calling to see if we can make it one more day. But I felt that way. And I really started changing some lifestyle, changing some things in my life. But the biggest challenge after um, I got out of the hospital was I lost, I'd always had fairly nice hair and I lost handfuls of hair. I mean, wow. I'm talking hair at a time. It's hard, uh, especially hair, for a woman. Yeah. Oh, that was tough. That I got desperate. Uh, my hair fell out. I would, we'd be in the car and I'd just touch my hair like this Yeah. and I'd have a floorboard full of hair to wow. the point I could take all my hair and put it into a little tiny hairpin little thing and wear a wig. I wore a wig for eight months because my hair was so gone. It was just gone. And the hair I did have felt like a uh, shredded wheat it was like shredded wheat. Wow. And I mean, I looked like I was a victim of something. And so I bought a wig. Right. It's how, how our health is in some other wow. areas. Um, through whatever life hands us, you know, uh, stress can just deteriorate so much of the body. So I found right. a product that I started using and providing to my, um, my coaching clients to help with areas of, to help them regain focus, to help them regain stamina, to make them, you know, to help them feel good. Right. And the key is the removal of inflammation from our body. And, so I was like this bald woman that had always thought hair was the, I mean, I'm all over that scripture about the hair is a woman's glory. You know, uh, I was all over that. You know, I was raised in the big hair Dallas, you know, big, <laughs> big hair, you know, I don't even know how we got our hair that big in the eighties. So <laughs> when I started, Really? I was like crazy. Right. When I got started getting healthier and feeling better, my hair started coming back in mounds and this is not a wig. And this is fact, I had to kind of scrunch it down. You got gray hair. I mean, wow. Beautiful Thank you. Grit. But yeah. it is again, health returned and the product. So I looked for something for health, but the other thing is I became very aware decades ago that funding, we have to have funding to, to fulfill our calling. And we can kid ourselves and get hyper spiritual about it. And we, I think we believers have a tendency to have every question. I hope this comes out. Okay. Have every question to the answer to be a spiritual, right? You know, it's all that. And sometimes I think we hide behind the realities of what we can do in life, hiding behind everything being a spiritual principle. And God is in everything. There's no question about it. Right. He does have expectations of us. For instance, a lot of people feel like creating a, having a vision. It's God's going to hit them like a bolt of lightning. They're going to yeah. be set and eating Fritos and God's just going to come down from heaven and say, speak ye here, go he year, you know, that kind of thing, <laughs> oh, therefore, you know, all that kind of thing. And I really, <laughs> I think that may happen sometimes. I think it does. I'm happy if that happens to me. But I also really think that in Habakkuk, it mentions that I will set myself aside. I will set myself on a tall wall. I will ask of him and he will answer me. Wow. And I think there's a part we do to set ourselves aside, to have that time with God, to have that time and ask him. Even the question I ask now quite often of God is, God, what do you think of me? Mm. What do you think about how I'm living my life? How do you think about how I respond, how I speak, how I live, how I love? Am I truly on track with you? I know I'm your child. I know I'm saved. I know I have eternal life coming. And I love that. How am I living this one? How am I showing up in this life? And asking God, you know, would you speak to me about those areas that I may not be what I need to be? Mm -hmm. I may not be what you've called me to be. Am I fulfilling my purpose? Because your know, vision right. is your purpose, the picture around your purpose. How will you feel? What does it look like? That's your vision. 
is the picture around your purpose. When you reach your vision, you've wow. automatically reached your purpose. Wow. So I'm, I'm taking notes here. <laughs> and so I realized that wealth, however you want to frame it, abundance, having the funds, the money to fulfill the calling in a free way, in a way that gives us the flow, the freedom, the capacity to explore the possibilities God has and to be able to move, to be able to move. You know, you need to go here and do this. Like I'm very, very um, touched by the child trafficking situation. Yeah. Very, very touched. I'll probably never be able to go to Colombia or somewhere and go in the jungle and find these children. And maybe my part is funding. And a lot of times we right. act like funding is a four-letter word. Well, actually, fund is a four-letter word. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we, yeah. we, we've seen it time and time again. And we need to do more shows on this, Terry. You know, we're almost out of time for our first show. I want people to hear your story and that you have found a solution. You know, you're helping people discover uh, what mm -hmm. true wealth is with your coaching, but what true health is as well with your amazing story, because you're, you're a living example of it. You know, for those who see this on broadcast, uh, you see at the bottom of your screen, you know, the QR code uh, that you can kickstart this thing in your life. We need to do several shows on this. And of course, you know, I've asked Terry to, to be a part of a, of, of a new show for boomers as well. You know, uh, boomers are living longer folks, you know, uh, today's grandma and grandpa, they're not sitting in rockers and sewing sweaters. They're playing rock and roll and riding Harleys and motivational speaking and leading, you know, uh, corp corporations and such. And we really have to be able to go the distance. And Terry can show you how to go the distance, not only in your heart, your mind, your soul, your spirit, your vision, but also in your body. You know, we've only got one body on this earth so far. And uh, I can't wait for her to tell you uh, how to begin to, to step into true health so that you can fulfill your mission. And for those of you who have a ministry that needs funding, Terry, you've got a solution for that as well. So I can't wait for part two with Terry Warner. Thank you.